Hello, I'm Aramir, everybody. I'm Michelle Marie Tony, and today we're going to show you briefly a little video I just shot uh, with my phone about how we we're actually lighting the studio with the incandescents versus the CFLs. Now, you already know we're using the incandescents because my eyes are obviously not hurting. Unfortunately, the hair is growing out. And I want to remind you, I do have a hair appointment on the 6th of November. Also, there's a possibility that on the 1st of November, which is on a Saturday, we might have in Winston area some snowflakes. Um, I can't tell you how much snowflakes because the uh, people at the Weather Channel keep changing their mind constantly. Um, sometimes I'm hearing, I'm seeing the snowflake icon and sometimes I don't see a snowflake icon on my iPhone but during November 1st is a time from now so it's not right now so don't get too gung-ho about snowflakes um, but it definitely will according to the extended forecast it shows that temperatures will definitely be getting close to zero if not minus two degrees Celsius hi Mr. Cat now he wants his attention. Um, Rusty has been, of course, eating up a storm, and he's getting quite plump for a cat. Um, for Tom, he is, of course, muscles, but he's also very, very, very bulked up, um, as are, I'm sure a lot of people will be as well. Of course, winter coming up, people are starting to bulk up overall anyway. So... I want to let you know that I got a hair appointment, as I said, on the 6th. I couldn't do it any sooner than that. So you'll just have to accept that my hair is growing out, and that's the best I can do right now. Um, well, yeah, I could possibly get my hair done if I'm willing to sacrifice the can see eye drives for my eyes, which we know is not something that I'm really comfortable doing at this point. But we'll see what happens. You know, things change. Also, of course, um, the weather is going to be, um, is changing. And eventually, sometime soon, my landlord will be getting it off his ass and getting some heat in here as well. Of course, right now, he's always trying to procrastinate and waiting for the pleasure of autumn so that he doesn't have to turn the heat on until it's really freezing cold and then... He basically turns it on at his leisure and we all freeze to death. As our wonderful friend there, the Duke of um, Weaselton would say. Weaselton? <laughs> Whatever. You're giving away all the dirt of the goods so while we all freeze to death! Well, it's not that cold in here yet. Yeah, it will be coming up soon. It's also very windy outside too right now, so which obviously means that this old buildings like this one are drafty are going to be getting kind of drafty. And uh, of course that's expected. Now, uh, other news for today is, I think I forgot to turn the uh, amplifier off, but uh, it's not squealing, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Anyway, the, um, don't forget, on uh, Sunday, you got to set your hours, clocks back an hour here in the United States. That uh, is on November 2nd. Now, for those of you who are in the few states that do not exercise daylight savings time, well, you have nothing to worry about. The rest of us do. Russia has decided that it's going to stick with the um, with the winter time after this point, and they said, "Pardon my French, screw this. We don't want to do it anymore. It's creating all kinds of problems for people. So we'll stick with winter time year round and call it quits." Good idea, Russia. Why don't we do it here in the United States too? While you're at it, follow the other states like Arizona, Ohio, Ohio, and of course a few others. Is Ohio? I think it's part of Ohio. I think it's part of Ohio, too. I'm not sure. Okay. In Hawaii, it does the same thing. It basically says, summertime, you can go kiss my butt. 
Now, um, tonight, of course, is going to be Once Upon a Time on ABC Networks. Of course, by the time you see this video, it already will have aired um, episode 5. So, well, what I also wanted to let you know that ABC has asked Once Upon a Time to get in another hour show for the season. How that's going to be done is beyond me, but obviously, hopefully, it means that, who knows, maybe they will renew the series for the next season. Once Upon a Time was already having problems with, uh, a prior to the Frozen arc, was actually starting to lose his patronage, and it was almost at the risk of being axed a few times. So Howard's, uh, Howard's in his uh companion are the ones who decided to bring in the Frozen um, franchise and actually help to revive the program, which has done quite a bit. Another show that was axed because of sexual molestation allegations is Honey, is Here Comes Boo Boo, or Honey Boo Boo. Well, that show on the TLC was not doing too good. It's been running for a few years, and obviously... It has suffered a loss of viewership. So, TLC probably would have asked the show anyway because it wasn't making the kind of viewership so they couldn't easily market the show to advertisers. We'll have to see what happens with that. Of course, now that they said the show is permanently no more because oh, supposedly Mama, whatever her name is there, is supposedly having... A relationship with a convicted sex offender, McDaniels, which she said, no, I'm not. In fact, she said, I didn't even really see the guy in over 10 years, and I'm not really interested in dating him. Um, Boo Boo, which, which name, his real name is Alana, has, of course, um, made basically her name for herself as being a little smart aleck, uh, blonde-haired southern kid. Speaking of another southern kid, which is now as a young man, is what happened to uh, Copper Cap, or known as Michael Cottrell. Well, very simple. Um, the show is still on on reels, but it's they need to make some more footage um, because I guess with Dee Dee's wedding going on and Michael Cottrell's career starting to take off, they need to clearly add more uh, programs in filming in between. Um, all those different venues is going to take Reels a little longer to do. However, Reels has said that they are indeed are going to continue on with the uh, Hollywood Hillbillies. In fact, it's hoping to um, have some more f film shortly. Okay. Now, uh, in other news, the um, like I said, besides the fact is that we also have Voting day coming up here in the United States, election Tuesday, November 4th. And already I can tell you from Iowa caucus, it looks like the Democrats are a little bit concerned that they may lose a lot of seats this year. Unfortunately, one of the seats I'd like to see disappear real quick is the President of the United States, Mr. Abomination himself, or basically our, our tyrant-in-chief, trying to continue to push its marketing, his NSA programs. James Comey is still pushing for companies to put in back doors for security um, so that people can actually be easily spied on by the NSA, CIA, FBI, and others, including TSA and the Department of Homeland Security. You, in this case, unfortunately, because of your stupidity in the first place through this um, Patriot Act under Section 702 of uh, the, the FISA court, which should also be outlawed completely, considering we should not have a secret court, we should have a regular U.S. court, and that should be it. Um, our government has, has basically created a whole secret government within itself, which Obama only knows a small portion of it, and the sad truth is, it's not getting any better. Tom loves you in the last few articles has reminded us over and over again that we should prepare because of the sun's ex flares are growing um, in severity. In fact, according to suspicious minds, it said that our ex flares on the sun have actually 
that have not resulted in very many significant CMEs, but still, one day our son is going to drop a nice hot goober in our backyard, and that's going to be the end of us, according to Tom Lupshue. Unfortunately, Tom Lupshu never seems to talk specifically about how is a person on a fixed income supposed to prepare for something like this. I'd like to give you a suggestion, and I'll tell you right now that, Mr. Tom Lupshu, I think you owe the American people at least the same thing. You should be willing to talk about how people, even in the cities, can prepare for such an event uh, such as total communication failure, electrical grid failure, and everything else. And that's not a joke, seriously. Um, I'm going to actually I'm gonna work on it. I'm going to see if I can find a way to develop a program for the low income as a way for you to prepare for at least to hunger down for 90 days without food and water from the outside sources in case of Ebola spreads further into a more of an er, a global pandemic and possibly causing major issues here in the United States. The fact of the matter is, Ebola does not even have to be weaponized. It could easily be spread from person to person, as can flu and a common cold. Solution for all of these things, wash your hands before and after you go to the bathroom and make sure to wash your hands before you eat anything, okay? That way, in case you actually do touch something that's got germs on it, at least you can wash your germs off. Also, like the Mythbusters proved, the hand dryer, for this purpose, electric hand dryers are not suitable. You need paper towels, and you need to use real honest-to-God soap. So if you happen to be one of those people who like to put your hand under a blow dryer, Please make sure you understand that you may be spreading your contagion of uh, what is on your hands throughout the entire bathroom facility um, because it will sp spread the germs far and wide as it blows off your skin and into the air and then is into your nostrils, which is not going to help you because you might get a cold which is from the vinyl virus and any other airborne contagion. So therefore, make sure to wash your hands with real soap. Make sure to wash them good. Under the nails included, okay? Everywhere. Wash them for about three to five minutes on a nice, and now rinse them off with nice warm water. And then, using a paper towel, dry your hands thoroughly, okay? Especially before you eat. And if you're going to use, I mean, you should wash your hands before you eat anyway, but make sure most people do not do that, and you should. If you don't want to get anything nasty like the cold, the flu, Ebola, or any other virus that could be out there in the atmosphere that you are in. And Mr. Cat, what are you doing? Come on. Amen. You know. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, my cat's doing good. He's eating good in this neighborhood. Oh, by the way, whatever happened to the style TV channel, well... It turns out that style, which was one of the reasons I wanted to get back into the America's Top 250, uh, is being replaced by a men's channel, which is called Esquire TV. Well, gee, that was a waste of my money to get that upgrade. And we'll, maybe I'll just downgrade back down to the America's Top 200 again um, next month, we'll say. Uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, okay. Okay, by the way, what about the blue screen? We never really did much with this, have we? Well, you know what? Hmm. I'm wearing white right today. It's still clean. It's still clean. I just put the shirt on side. Um, but, uh, I don't know. It's just, um, how's your weight doing? My weight is so-so. Am I supposed to be pleased? I'm just pleased. I don't know. It could be whatever we want. <laughs> okay. Well, anything we can do. But wait, I'm glad you asked. Um, we were watching some videos on clothing in the Victorian area. And one of the things that we could consider getting is being used by some women now. And, yeah, some men as well. There are actually now girdles for men. Uh, 
for the same reason we have girdles for women. If you want something a little more stronger than a girdle, you can always go with a corset. <laughs> you can either get an underbust or overbust. You get an overbust, that'll be good because it'll make your boobs look bigger. Yay. <laughs> but tight lacing a corset by yourself is a bitch. I'm serious. I can't have a hard enough time just trying to lace some of my tie backs on some of my dresses I got. Um, but you know what? That corset is a great come very popular in Mr. Kitty. Here. Keep getting in my way. What is your problem? Yes, I can. He actually likes being on camera. He does, yeah. Now, uh, the next thing is, is what are we going to do for this winter? Well, you know, this winter is going to be relatively, for me, it's going to be a fairly simple winter as far as management goes. It's not going to be like I have to deal with any major warm spells that's going to throw a monkey wrench into the works. I gotta be honest here. However, I want to remind you, and this is for anybody, please, 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 as I said, coming up on the 28th on cable 13, please do have your generator ready and ready on standby with extra fuel on hand make sure you get a good oil change um check your spark plugs points whatever you need to do check the oil if you have to make sure that the generator is running at optimum efficiency because you may need it this winter as we certainly will be seeing a lot of wind right now it's very windy outside at this point and like I said earlier, it can get pretty drafty in here because these old buildings like this one do not have the best uh, ceiling in the walls or anything to keep the heat in because this building is an older Victorian tenement building and it has no serious insulation, if any at all, in the walls. So, you know, we depend on a lot of heat to keep this place warm. Thank God for central heating, but you know what? When you got a landlord that's a real cheapskate and runs the controls of the thermostat, you ain't got to get any. Uh, that's another reason why we're using the, CF, the incandescent light bulbs is they are heat producers and they also will warm the studio up and the apartment pretty nice. Right now we're consuming about 700 watts or about a little bit oh, closer to a 0.7 kilowatt hours so i could calculate the price if i really want to then we'll find out it's probably about 15 cents a kilowatt hour right now and um maybe 11 cents no no that's about it's about 15 when you add all the taxes and crap in okay 15 to 18 cents for some people uh boy well what next in life where are we go from here well the truth is is that i don't have an answer to everybody's question what you're gonna go what you're gonna say what you're gonna do but i do know that for me um my whole life is up in the air as far as future options yeah michelle's finger toys yeah BL60 battery. I gotta find these for that. Um, now, with my eyes, I'm going to explain that I'm still doing my best to hold my own. Rusty, what are you doing? He's just jumping around. Just jumping around. Sit down. Come on. I'll give you attention, but you know what? You know how it is. So anyway, coming up, you're going to see a brief little video of me walking around and showing you the studio and how we have changed the lighting to work for this studio setup a bit better. And this is me. Let me, me tell you we're going to be doing a video. But first, I want to show you something uh, with the lighting. We've changed the lights, as you know, from CFLs and incandescents. And for the most part, my eyes have been pretty good. So, 
let me show you what exactly has happened, what has changed, and what I seem to be a little more forgiving. Uh, first of all, I don't know if my, my camera and my phone can reduce CFL. There you go. This is the one light up here, okay? 300 watt monster, major heat producer, lots of energy, lots of light. Lights at the back wall. The other said incandescent light bulb over here. Again, same thing. Lights up the wall. Like it throws a lot of heat. Key light is over here. Now, we know that the, st the uh, standard camera itself needs an 80B filter. So let me turn on this one over here so we see this here. And you will notice that we have on the end of the lens here is an 80B filter which allows us to keep a picture pretty close to where it should be. Okay. So, um, and that's how it works. That's how the incandescent lights are being used in the studio now to replace all those mercury-laden toxic CFL. And also, we know that there's a nice little glitch with iMovie 6 HD. And I'm not sure why we got this glitch. What it is is that the fade-out function is adding additional cruft to it. I wonder if it could be because of the way you have it set to cut images out. If maybe you should just go straight to iMovie 6 and not go through Quick QuickTime Player and edit down that way. You know, I might have to. I'll, I'll work on that. But first, I have to re-render the iPhone video to PAL so we can integrate it into this video. And we are going to do it like we did for the um, Cable 13 channel. We are going to put it in letterbox so it would be closer to the actual uh, native aspect ratio of the phone. And uh, we'll see where it goes from there. Now, by the way, Lou, when was the last time you did a UTEMP channel video? Oh, God. Too long. Too long. Yeah. We were going to do one with Dory. Unfortunately, she's not here today. Maybe she'll be here tomorrow. Maybe she'll be here tomorrow. Um, and um, we want to, me and her, we're going to talk about clothing and um, some fashion stuff. Uh, she's interested in clothing from the, from the 1950s. I'm interested in clothing from the 1850s. So therefore, we can talk about a hundred years difference between clothing and dresses and undergarments, including such things as the petticoat and how that's changed. Plus, of course, the use of the corset in bustier. So let's not bustier. So let's not forget the bustle. The bustle is very cool. Bustle is cool. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about all those different things, and uh, we certainly will do so. And um, because remember, one of the things that um, um, Elsa said to Emma is, is that all your dress you're wearing? Where's the corset? <laughs> yeah, the corset, the corset. Okay. Anyway, so tonight we're going to be watching... Once upon a time, eight o'clock, and of course, it's uh, getting late already. And uh, so, do you want to probably do a video tomorrow, with Dory? Are you gonna do a video here at time tonight? What? I don't know yet. Probably tomorrow because it's late, and I don't know what time it is. I don't know either. I have no idea what time it is. So we're gonna get ready to wrap this up. But please don't forget that we'd love to hear from you. And if you have any comments, suggestions, concerns, gripes, complaints. Or just want to sh express your fears or whatever. I'd love to hear from you. Okay. So please do not forget to 
like or dislike the video, share with your friends and enemies, subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so, and you can leave your comments in the section below here. And if you want to send me a private comment, you can send it to B-I-C-H-E-L-A-3 at gmail.com. And you can also send it to me on my Patreon page at www.patreon.com forward slash B-I-C-H-E-L-A or Go fund me at http colon forward slash forward slash www.gofundme dot com forward slash b i c h e l a, and I will read them. I will listen to them, and I certainly will reply to you as well. And as far as what I was talking about with Tom Lupshu, um, he never got back to me about my concerns that he did not seem to think they were a big deal. Well, we are going to talk about those issues coming up in a few segments. And, of course, we need to get a few more videos ready for Cable 13 as well. Right now, we have enough programs until November up on Cable 13. But we are going to be adding more videos as we go. Okay? So, for now, we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.